Ridley Scott's Napoleon highlights the titular subject's life. From military campaigns to personal tidbits, we break down the biopic's ending. Ridley Scott's Napoleon ends on a sour note for Joaquin Phoenix's Napoleon Bonaparte, the famous French emperor and military leader. Following his first exile, Napoleon escaped the island of Elba and returned to France, where he rallied the 5th Regiment's soldiers with a speech and regained his power. In the 100 days following Napoleon's return to France, the military leader attempted to thwart the British and Prussian armies during the Battle of Waterloo, but his army was no match against them. The British army held their own in the fight, while the Prussian army flanked the French on the right side. Defeated, Napoleon abdicated for a second time, after realizing he no longer had the same support. Before he was exiled again, Napoleon went to see Empress Josephine, who had fallen ill shortly before his arrival and passed away in his absence. Napoleon had hoped to see her, and despite being unwell, Josephine expressed a desire to see Napoleon despite their complicated relationship. Napoleon's goal as French emperor and amp military rule. Napoleon Bonaparte had different goals at various stages in his life, but his primary one during the height of his power as emperor of France and military rule was to conquer the powerful countries that were opposed to him, namely Russia. But Napoleon also wanted to control other parts of Europe, including Britain, and place them under French rule. That goal extended to areas of the Ottoman Empire as well. Though Napoleon didn't quite get there after having lost thousands upon thousands of troops during his various military campaigns, although Napoleon was an initial supporter of the French Revolution and the removal of the monarchy crowning himself emperor and later marrying Mary Louise, an Archduchess of Austria, was his attempt at creating his own royal bloodline to continue ruling over France following his death. It's why he tried so desperately to produce an heir with Empress Josephine and why he ultimately divorced her when she couldn't bear him a son. It was Napoleon's ego and lust for power that drove him, especially in his later years. What happened to Napoleon after his second exile? Napoleon's second exile was to St. Helena, an island in the Atlantic Ocean. He was cut off from his wife and son and was under British guard during the entirety of his time there. While living in St. Helena, Napoleon wrote a book about Julius Caesar, though he didn't much care for the living conditions or accommodations he was provided. However, he still had a small contingent of supporters with him on the island. Napoleon's second exile lasted for six years, much longer than his first, which only lasted for 300 days. Napoleon died in May 1821 at the age of 51 from stomach cancer. While it was later suggested that he was deliberately poisoned by arsenic, which is why Napoleon's body was so well preserved, other studies showed that the former French emperor was probably unintentionally exposed to arsenic through other things at the time. He was buried in Saint Helena, but Louis-Philippe Juarez was able to return Napoleon to France, where he received a state funeral. The real meaning of Napoleon's last words. Napoleon Bonaparte's last words were, France, the army, head of the army, Josephine. These words essentially sum up Napoleon's life. He was devoted to France and to his soldiers, and though they had a tumultuous relationship that can be construed as toxic, Napoleon shared an intense relationship with Empress Josephine. So it was no surprise that she, along with France, would be on his mind at the end of his days. The words themselves suggest what Napoleon valued most in his life, and what he essentially pledged his life to. Before his death, Napoleon was also delirious, and claimed to have seen Josephine. A few days before he died, Napoleon confessed and received absolution from Abbe Vignali, a representative of the Pope. To that end, it's possible Napoleon's last words alluded to a deep regret that he could only acknowledge right before his death. Perhaps it was regret regarding the way he handled his rule of France and the wars, or the way he treated Josephine. Regardless, Napoleon's final words spoke to the very things that were most central to his life and which he dedicated himself to while he was alive. How Napoleon Returns to Power After His First Exile Ridley Scott's film showcased Napoleon's popularity with the 5th Regiment, 
who had sworn allegiance to Louis XVIII, Napoleon's successor. Not only did the 5th Regiment choose to follow Napoleon, as he reinstated himself as emperor, but the number of soldiers grew to 200,000. It was rather easy for Napoleon to re-establish himself in France, because Louis XVIII wasn't a beloved ruler, and Napoleon still had massive support and connections, many of whom were still incredibly loyal to him. What Ridley Scott Leaves Out of Napoleon's True Story Historical fiction movies take creative liberties, altering facts or omitting information. Napoleon's true story isn't entirely accurate either. The film leaves out the fact that Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington, and Napoleon never actually met. Napoleon also had plenty of affairs and several illegitimate children while married to Empress Josephine. The film only includes one of his mistresses and his second marriage. Napoleon was also not at Marie Antoinette's beheading. Crucially, there were a few assassination attempts on Napoleon's life that are left out of the film entirely. Besides being crowned emperor, Napoleon was also crowned King of Italy in 1805. Why Napoleon Fights For the French, despite being Corsican, Napoleon has long been affiliated with France, despite being born in Corsica, an island in the Mediterranean Sea. Corsica has a long history, and it was under the Republic of Genoa's rule, though it was briefly a sovereign state. Napoleon was considered French because he was born just one year after Genoa ceded Corsica to France in 1768. While Napoleon's parents fought against France to maintain Corsica's independence and his family were descendants of Italian nobility, Napoleon considered himself French later in life and supported the French Revolution against the monarchy. In his early years, however, Napoleon identified as Corsican and even wanted to fight against the French occupation. Napoleon's legacy and amp, the impact of his rule over France, Napoleon's legacy is a mixed bag. On one hand, he created civil codes that were influenced by the French Revolution, which pushed other parts of Europe towards revolution. The Napoleonic Code also reformed the French legal system, which previously did not have a concrete set of laws for citizens. The civil code laid the groundwork for legal equality, and it was influential as it spread. On the other hand, Napoleon's rule also reinstated slavery in the French colonies, and he stole artifacts and artwork from other countries and brought them to France. Napoleon also rattled France's economy, and his multiple military campaigns killed millions. 